if you've uh, done everything up to now and you've sanded it, you've got your finish on, you're ready to um, put a string on the instrument. So before we can put the string on, we have to do a couple things here. So this is uh, step 10 in your instructions. The first thing we're going to do is we need to drill a hole in our violin peg down here. And we want to mark the location of that hole and it, it just needs to sit out um, from here a little bit. So take your violin peg and, and push it in, you know, rather firmly. You can mark it with um, an awl or you can use just some tape. And, you know, roughly we're, we want this string hole to be about a quarter inch or so out from the end block. Once you've got that marked, take a uh, scrap piece of wood here and I have an electric drill with a sixteenth inch drill bit and I want to put this pin on this scrap wood and hold it down firmly so that when I drill through I'm not tearing out um, the back side of the pin so uh, here we go It does actually help to have some tape on the back here. Um, so this will, that's how you drill the hole for your violin peg. Take the tape off, put that back in there. And then we need to put our tail pin in. The tail pin will go down here. And the idea is that the, uh, the string will run more or less down the center of the fingerboard. So we want to locate our tail pin um, be like that. You could just do it by holding your string up and marking it like that. If you got your fingerboard installed um, according to the directions, you should be able to locate this. It should be sitting at um, an inch and three eighths in from this edge. And then we can just we just want it in a little bit away from this back edge, but we want to make sure we're still going into the um, this end block here. So you can mark this um, location with a pencil or you can use an awl again. And then this tail pin is actually just um, a little nail uh, with a head on it. So you'll just put that there and tap this in. And we want to leave we want to leave a little bit of room here for the string to go under the head so that it'll look like this. Well now we're ready to install our string. Step 11 in your instructions. You want to have your bridge handy and your little scrap of leather, your string, and a wire cutter and a little masking tape. Um, so we'll start by putting our string in place here over the tail pin and we'll tape that down. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to clip this string oh, about three inches beyond the, the violin peg here. We'll clip that. Now this is, a, this is the tricky part but it's not too bad. I would turn the pin to tighten it away from you. Um, so if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see this, but we don't want to have a, a pokey end sticking out. You, know, you can go down and trim that with your wire cutter later, but you can't quite cut it all the way with a wire cutter. So what I like to do is pull this till it's just in there and then start turning. And then if I can pull it back and keep tension on it, it'll stay in just fine. And I can keep turning. And I want to get it um, until it's just got enough tension to stay. Then I can take and put this leather. Uh, I might need to loosen it a little bit to slide this leather down. Put this leather to protect so this string doesn't dig deeply into the wood. And we're good there. We can go back down here and we can uh, take this tape off. 
slide our bridge in place. And if I just look at my instructions, it says the bridge should be about 28 and a half inches away from this first fret. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do that. There we go. So we're, we're right there. Put some, uh, put a little tension on it. I need a tuner. Pause. And, and now we're going to tune the string and we want this to be tuned to G below middle C. This violin peg is, um, can be tough to do real fine adjustments with. So if you get it real close to G but you're going a little bit over, you can kind of pull on the string a little bit and that'll drop the pitch. Now if you can come in and, and get a close up on this tuner, now we can fine tune the placement of the bridge and I'm going to just try to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do to fine tune the placement of the bridge is we're going to take two readings on our electronic tuner and compare them and the two readings we take we want the needle to be in exactly the same position. We're going to take a reading from the open string and at the octave. Now, uh, to get to the octave, we want to fret it at the 13th fret. So I'm going to count up to the 13th fret. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'll put a little mark here so I don't lose my place. And now we'll come down, uh, bring the camera in, and we'll look at the needle on this tuner. So. I'm not exactly at a GM, a little flat, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. What we want to make sure happens is that when we pluck the string open like this, and then when we fret the string on the 13th fret, we want the needle to be in exactly the same spot with the same note over here. So let's see what happens. You can see the needle now is right here, that dot. Now, when I fret the string, the needle has jumped up about 10 cents on the tuner. So that means that this note is too sharp. And so what we need to do is, if you look over at the bridge here, we're going to scoot the bridge back just a little bit. If the second or fretted note is too sharp, you're going to scoot the bridge back. Conversely, if the fretted note is too flat, you're going to scoot the bridge forward. So let's see if I've made the correct adjustment. We'll come back to the tuner now. Now my open string is putting the needle right there. So let's take a reading with the fretted string. That's about perfect. It is. It will jump around a little bit so you're kind of looking for the average of those readings and where it settles. It's looking, looking pretty good to me. So that's how you fine tune the location of the bridge. If you don't understand any of this, um, putting the bridge at 28 and a half inches away from the first fret will get you close enough. So there you have it. Um, good luck. And one more note about this. When I say the first fret, and this is uh, indicated in your instructions as well, I'm calling this the first fret, although in reality it's a zero fret. And what that means is when you pluck the string without fretting, without putting your fingers on the fingerboard, that's the open string. So that's, so really this is the first fret. And this is the second. So it's the 12th fret. Um, in theory that we're because there are 12 notes in a scale and so that's why we're getting an octave at the 12th fret 
but I've been calling it the 13th fret because I'm calling the 0 fret the 1st fret. Is that making any sense? You don't need to know any about that. Just, just do this stuff and you'll be fine. Okay, bye.